Welcome to the Rock Coding YouTube channel. My name is Anton and today we're going to take a look at YARP, yet another reverse proxy made by Microsoft. The story is there were a bunch of teams across Microsoft that were trying to implement a reverse proxy and they managed to communicate, they managed to come together and collaborate their work into one project. Thus, YARP was born. This video is going to be an overview video of some of its features so you can understand for what use cases YARP can be used. If you're enjoying the video, leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, Questions, leave them in the comments section or come ask them on my Discord server. I have a C Sharp course that is out. If you would like to know C Sharp as I do it, highly recommend you check it out. With that, let's go ahead and get started. We have three projects over here. The app at the top is the one that has Yarp, the reverse proxy, installed. We're going to open that up and then we have a one and two over here. Both of them are pretty empty. We just have one endpoint that is going to perform some calculation and identify which application it is that we are calling. The difference is the second one does echo the custom header which is being appended. If I open up the terminals, I have these applications running. We then also have a Vue.js project over here and that is actually where I'm going to start. So let's close everything. We're gonna run the Vue.js project and this is running on a different port. And if you've ever developed SPA applications, you know that you're gonna have course issues and then you're gonna need to pull in this SPA extension package, set it up, etc. Well, now you can actually use a reverse proxy and it seems a little bit more understandable that yes, you're going to receive some requests and you're just going to forward it to this address. So let's take this address. We're going to copy it. We're going to open up program CS. And first of all, let's bring in some services. So in services, we're going to add reverse proxy. We're then going to add an endpoint map forwarder. The first parameter we want to say which route it is and what I actually want to do is capture everything. You do that by saying two asterisks and then giving it a name. I like to say rest, you can say all and then the second parameter specifies where we're going to be forwarding to which is going to be this address. But let's place a semicolon over here. With that, the application should restart if we come back to the browser. By the way, I have their documentation open and we will be taking a look at it. Now, from the root, if I reload it, we're going to see the Vue.js application. If I still want to reach the API, I can do that no problem. Let's come back to the project. We're going to open up the app.view. We're just going to do a little edit to make sure that hot module replacement works as well. So keep in mind for development, if you would like to reverse proxy your calls to one development server, two development servers, you can do that without any issues. With that, let's go ahead and close the Vue.js project. I'm going to close this file as well. Let's collapse everything here. I'm going to comment out this map forwarder. And now we're going to go to the documentation to the getting started. And the rest of the documentation is all right. I wouldn't say it is top notch, but it is manageable. You will see here how we want to register the configuration to be loaded with a load from config. And then we also have this reverse proxy configuration over here. We're going to grab the configuration. We're going to go to app settings, place it over here to just quickly understand routes and clusters. Routes is your incoming request. And then where do you want to send it? So you specify your cluster ID and which cluster, which backend are you proxying these requests to? If I open up the terminal and I grab the HTTP address of the one application, I'll place this over here remove the spaces. Again, to highlight, we're saying grab all of the requests, forward them to cluster one. And this is what cluster one is. It just has one address, but you can specify more configuration here. We go to program CS. We say that a load from configuration on the builder, we're going to have configuration and we're going to have a section. And the section is, you guessed it, a reverse proxy. Once we have configured our service, we want to surface this in the middleware. Instead of map forwarder, you say map reverse proxy, semicolon on the end here. And after the app is going to be reloaded, if we refresh here, we're going to see that the request is indeed coming from this app one. We can also, let's say, add some query parameters like A and B, 10 and 15. This is going to add them together. And the computation is different depending on which backend you choose. So the query parameters get sent across as well. Because you can have many backends, YARP can act as a API gateway to all of those APIs. And primarily why I want to share YARP actually is because it helps you facilitate backend for frontend. 
in both of the scenarios, authentication and backend orchestration. Now, before we take a look at orchestrating the communication of the two backends, I'm going to take a look and actually a quick detour into load balancing. If we come into the configuration over here, we take our destination and we just copy it across and say that we have two destinations and one of the destinations is going to be this API 2. And by the way, every single time the configuration reloads, it outputs a log and it's not actually your API restarting or your app is not restarting. It's the configuration being reloaded. If I refresh over here, we can see that Actually, let me make this a little bit bigger. The result sometimes comes from two, sometimes it comes from one. Which backend actually executes this request depend on the load balancing strategy. So you will have to pick the load balancing policy over here and some of them will be described. Basically, if you want one by one, you just grab round robin. This is what we're going to have over here. And please notice that you are specifying load balancing on the cluster, not on the destinations. If you place it over here and we start refreshing, you will see that sometimes you're going to get an exception because this destination over here doesn't actually have an address. So it's just like the destination is null. So load balancing, put it on the cluster. Uh, let's refresh here and you will see that now the load balancing is more consistent which is when it just goes to one and then to the other one etc now if you have caching on the back end and this is actually a very good way to learn about authentication and load balancing is if you're authenticated as one user and you have information cached regarding your user session on the back end if you switch the backend that your requests go to, you're essentially going to have duplication of caches. This is where session affinity can come in handy. Let's go ahead and copy this, come back to the settings. We're going to paste it to the first cluster. I have one additional brace missing and we're going to remove all of these comments, the policy and failure policy. We can get rid of that enabled flip to true affinity key name. You'd have to specify something unique here. And then my path can be useful if you're trying to orchestrate different backends on different paths. Here, we're just going to say that it's for the root path that this cookie should belong to. With that, we should get our session affinity if we come back and I refresh. Now, even though that we have the round robin strategy, we're going to API 2 because we have this key one over here. As soon as I clear this cookie, I'm going to go to the next one, which is one, and then that is being stored over here. Hence, I'm kind of stuck to making a request to this one backend. Now, let's say you don't want to randomly be going to two different backends. You actually want to choose where you're going. Let's take this session affinity stuff. I'm going to comment it out and hopefully it still works. I'm going to take destination two, comment it out as well. Take cluster one, paste it over here. Uh, let's get rid of destination two, all of this affinity stuff. We're going to say that it's cluster two. Cluster two is going to point to address two. And now if we take a look at the top here where we have routes, we actually want to define a second route. Since we're going to be orchestrating, we want to say that for all requests that are happening on path one, we want to send it to cluster one. Every request that is happening on path two, we want to send it to cluster two. And we'll have to name the route two as well. So route one goes to cluster one, route two goes to cluster two. Let's make sure that the configuration has reloaded. It did. Now, if I refresh here and I actually clear the cookie, first of all, there's going to be a 404 because this address isn't found on 7000. Remember that we have actually prefixed the one over here. So if we want to go to cluster one, we have to prefix one. However, now it still forwards the slash one to this port over here. This is where if we go back to the documentation, we take a look at the transforms section and transforms basically describes your incoming request, how do you want to change it before it goes to with whatever backend it goes to? And then once you get the response, how do you want to transform the response before it's proxy to fulfill the original request? Let's take a look at this. Here are a couple of examples. And one main example that we're interested in is this path pattern transform. Let's come back. We're going to place the path pattern transform over here and over here. 
we're gonna get rid of this query append and we're gonna get rid of this over here. For both one and two, we actually wanna get rid of one and two. We just wanna call the base path. So let's just get rid of this, get rid of this, and we'll take catch all and make sure that we replace the remainder with the catch all. Open up the terminal, configuration has restarted or reloaded. Let's come back over here. And now when we're calling to one, we are gonna be routing our request to API one. So now we get coordination. And if we go to two, we go to two. And then one of the other features that it has is appending headers. And you can actually implement some of this stuff yourself. I'm gonna sh be showing the authentication with BFF a little bit closer later as part of my authentication videos. Here, I just want to give a little tease of you can grab a request header, let's say on route two, that is when we actually are testing it with the header over here. So we are looking for test header. So request header test, and then let's say hello world over here. Nothing too complicated. Uh, the configuration should restart. Come back over here. If we go to two, we now have the header that we're passing along. Understand that you can also do it programmatically. And then if we are sending it to one, you can't see the header, but the header is not going to be attached. Now let's say that this one API is actually a legacy API and you want to replace a single request from that legacy API to something new. Uh, let's go over to our app program. We're going to go and look for a slash one. We'll say legacy over here. And we're going to say that it has been replaced. And actually, let's sp spell legacy correctly. If the application restarts over here, let's come back. And now we're going to go to slash legacy. Well, we'll see that the mapped endpoint actually takes precedence. So if you have some kind of legacy service and you actually want to extend it via inheritance, let's say Yarp allows you to do that. You go ahead and take it. You can override a route or you can extend it with a new route using .NET Core. And that is obviously if you're stuck using something like .NET Framework or classic ISP or God knows what. But this will be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, if you enjoyed it, leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section or better yet, come ask them on my Discord server. If you would like the source code for this video as well as my other videos, please come support me on Patreon. Your help will be very much appreciated. A very big and special thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. You help me make these videos. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good day.